6.5 Trapezoidal Rule Trapezoidal Approximations You probably noticed in section 6.1 that MRAM was generally more efficient in approximating integrals than either LRAM or RRAM, even though all three RAM approximations approach the same limit. All three RAM approximations, however, depend on the areas of rectangles. Are there other geometric shapes with known areas that can do the job more efficiently? The answer is yes. The most obvious one is trapezoid. Well, maybe it's obvious, but it certainly is obvious uh, once you take a look at how sometimes it, it fits the curve very well. As shown in figure 631, if AB is partitioned into n subintervals of equal length, the graph of F on A to B can be approximated by a straight line segment over each subinterval. So look how we have this curve and we're approximating the area under the curve using trapezoids rather than using rectangles. Imagine if we used right endpoints, we would have all of this extra space versus having a little sliver of space not accounted for. And look at this right here, when uh, the curve starts to become somewhat vertical, uh, the trapezoid approx approximates this area uh, very closely. The region between the curve and the x-axis is then approximated by the trapezoids. The area of each trapezoid being the length of the horizontal altitude times the average of its two vertical bases. Well, let's take a look at that. And really what it's saying is the total area is just the area of all the trapezoids. Well, think of this one, this side right here, as y sub 0. Think of this side right here as the y value, let's say, of x sub 1. So that makes it y sub 1 and then so on. So we have y sub 2, and then y sub 3 would be right here. That would actually be 0, and then we could keep going with that with a y sub 4. Well, let's, let's call this trapezoid 1, trapezoid 2, 3, 3, and 4. The area of trapezoid 1 would be 1 half times the, let's just say x, and it doesn't show that, uh, let's just make x's all the same length for the sake of argument right now. Uh, which is actually going to be the height of the trapezoid. So let's call this h. Let's call this h also. So we have 1 half h times, and then we would have y sub 0 plus y sub 1. And then we'd have plus 1 half h times, then we would use y sub 1, in other words, uh, base 1 plus base 2. That'd be y sub 1 plus y sub 2. Then we'd have 1 half h times y sub 2 plus y sub 3. And we'd keep going on in that fashion. When we factor out a 1 half h, we end up with y sub 0 plus 2 y sub 1s. Notice how we'd have a y sub 1 here and another one here. So we'd have 2 y sub 1 and then plus we would have 2 y sub 2s. But for the last one, we just have 1y sub 3. So we'd have uh, 1 of the first y's and 1 of the last y's. But in the middle, uh, you're gonna, we're going to use the middle sides twice. We would use this side once for the trapezoid 1 and then once for the second trapezoid. Then we'd use y2 for the second trapezoid and the third trapezoid. So the ones in the middle we're going to use twice, the one on the ends we only use once. That's kind of what this is saying right here. We use the middle ones twice and the one on the ends only one time. There's your trapezoid rule. The trapezoidal rule. To approximate the area under the curve, use the following. Where AB is partitioned into n subintervals of equal length, h equals b minus a over n. Equivalent, equivalently, the trapezoidal rule equals LRAM plus RAM divided by 2, where LRAM and RAM are the Riemann sums using the left and right endpoints, respectively, for, uh, for F for the partition. Applying the trapezoidal rule. Use the trapezoidal rule with n equal 4 to estimate the area under the curve of x squared. Compare the estimate with the value of n, i, and t, and with the exact value. All right, so we're going to split x squared up from 1 to 2 into four subintervals. So we have a parabola, and we have, we're going from 1 to 2. So here's 1, and here's 2. So we have 
this trapezoid from 1 to 1.25, from 1.25 to 1.5, and then from 1.5 to 1.75, and finally 1.75 to 2. So there's our four subintervals. We need uh, h over 2, which is 1 fourth over 2, times, we need f of 1 plus f of, actually, not one of those, but we're going to have two of these, plus 2 times f of 1.25 plus 2 times f of 1.5 plus 2 times f of 1.75 and then plus f of 2. And I'm going to use the calculator to uh, find all these values. I've entered the values into the calculator. We get 22.75 just for this part right here. And then I've multiplied that by 1 fourth. That's uh, H. And then over 2. Divide by 2 and we get 2.844. So 2.844. Now let's uh, use NINT. Let's go math number 9. It's actually FNINT. And the function is x squared, and the variable is x, and we're integrating from 1 to 2. And the answer is 2.333. FNINT gives us 2 and 1 third. Well, if we integrate x squared, we get, uh, so now let's do the actual answer. Uh, we have 1 to 2 of x squared dx. When we integrate, we get 1 third x to the third. And we're integrating that from 1 to 2. We get 8 thirds minus 1 third, which is 7 thirds, which is uh, 2 and 1 third, just like we got with FNINT. So, of course, this is just going to be an approximation of uh, the actual value. Example 2, averaging temperatures. An observer measures the outside temperature every hour from noon until midnight, recording the temperatures in the following table. What was the average temperature for the 12-hour period? Well, we're going from noon to midnight, and here are all the temperatures every hour. Well, if we're going to find the average temperature, we're going to take 1 over 12. That'd be 1 over, uh, this could be 24 minus 12. Uh, which would be 12, times the integral from 0 to 12, let's call noon 0, let's call midnight 12, uh, times f of x dx. But we don't know what the f of x is. Uh, we're going to have to approximate the area under the curve using the trapezoidal method. Uh, the h is 1, 1 hour over 2, times, and then the temperature, this is all the y values. So we have 63, plus 2 times 65, plus 2 times 66, plus keep on going, and the last one will be plus 55. Let's use our calculator to get uh, the approximation of the area. The approximation of the area is 782. We have 1 12th times 782, and we need to divide uh, 782 uh, divided by 12. So the average temperature is approximately, let's bring that back up, 65.167. 65.167. And looking at all the temperatures, that uh, seems like a pretty accurate uh, average. Simpson's rule. To approximate the area under the curve, use Simpson's rule is now h over 3 instead of h over 2. And then we take the first side, plus 4 times an x, plus 2 times an x, plus 4, and then it alternates 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, and then the last one uh, is just 1. Where a, b is partitioned into an even number and of subintervals of equal length. Applying Simpson's rule. Use Simpson's rule with n equals 4 to approximate the area under the curve from 0 to 2. Uh, so if we're going to go from 0 to 2 with four subintervals, we have 0 to 0.5 to 1 to 1.5 to 2. We'd have 1, 2, 3, uh, 4 subintervals. 
So we need uh, a half over three. That's part of Simpson's rule, half over three times. Uh, we would have five times zero to the fourth plus, so we have, the one would be first, so there'd be the one, and then the next one we have would be four, so we have plus four times. Uh, we'd have five times 0.5 to the fourth plus two times five times one to the fourth plus uh, then the next one would be four again times five times 1.5 to the fourth and then finally plus uh, the last one which would be five times two to the fourth. I have entered it in the calculator and we get 32 point 083083. And if we check that against FNINT, let's see, number nine, we have 5x to the fourth. Uh, the variable is x, and we're integrating from 0 to 2. And the actual value is 32. So it's a pretty close approximation. Section 6.5, use the trapezoidal rule with n equals 4 to approximate the value of the integral. Use the concavity of the function to predict whether the approximation is an overestimate or an underestimate. And finally, C, find the integral's exact value to check your answer. We're going to integrate from 0 to 2 of x squared using four subintervals. That means we're going to go from 0 to 0.5 to 1, to 1 1.5, to 2. That'd be 1, 2, 3, 4 subintervals. And uh, each interval, the height of the trapezoid is going to be 0. 0.5, so we have 0. 0.5 over 2 times. We have 0 squared plus 0. 0.5 squared plus 1 squared plus 1.5 squared. Actually, yeah. So we have uh, the height is going to be 0. 0.5 over 2 times 0 squared plus 2 times 0. 0.5 squared plus 2 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1.5 squared. That should be a times squared. And then uh, plus 2 squared. And we get an answer of 2.75. 2.75. If we graph x squared, make a little sketch of it, from let's say 0 to 2, the concavity is concave up. Imagine taking one big trapezoid from 0 to 2 rather than four of them. It would look like this and then come down here and this would be the trapezoid even though this is a triangle. If we move over a little bit then it looks more like a trapezoid. But regardless, this area is going to be an over approximation because we're going to get more area when this graph is concave up. Now, if this graph would have been concave down, let's say, with some other function, and we go from 0 to 2, and this would be an under approximation. So we're looking at an over approximation. The actual answer, the actual integral, of x squared from 0 to 2. Uh, let's see, we would integrate. That would be 1 third x to the third. And we're integrating from 0 to 2. When we plug 2 in, we get 8 thirds. So this is actually 2 and 2 thirds, which is 2.667 approximately. So we can see this is actually an over approximation.